100 meters, so just a couple of hundred meters lower and down from Davos, Mike. That's right, still without a doubt, you, when you're racing at 1400 meters, you totally feel that you are at altitude just uh, higher than the height of Ben Nevis, actually, back home in, in Scotland, but you definitely feel the lack of oxygen when you're pushing hard around 10 kilometers. So there you have uh, Marit Bjergen being followed by her Norwegian teammate, that's Ersberg. Also to the fore there, Hago of uh, Norway. Now I know you fancy von Schiebenthal, David. She's really working hard to get round and moving forward. Oh, and there's, uh, oh, that is Chekalaiva of uh, Russia who's uh, been pulled down. Look uh, how much time she's lost. Bit four and she's down to about, what, 25th position. Yeah, I mean, the position more than the time, really, because now she's wrapped up in a big traffic jam. Very much. And look at this. The skis are, well, between 160 and 185, 190. There's just no space when you're all going around these corners on the climb. And this is what the leaders had in their minds. You can see the breakaway here. So Bjergen is three, and then you have the yellow bib of Ersberg. And uh, right behind, you've got Heidi Veng, the bookmaker's favourite. And while I'm talking about bookmakers, of course, we've got the men's race later on in which Britain's Andrew Musgrave will start on the front rank. And uh, the bookmakers have been, well, interestingly uh, generous if you want to uh, go for an outright win, Mike. But there's a, there's a, a tantalising price for uh, getting on the podium. Well, I think there is. And, and you know... 150 to win outright. I think it is actually. And yeah. sort of 11 to 1 ish to get onto the podium. But it's amazing. And, you know, for Andrew to be carrying later today bib number seven, it shows the quality that he is now in terms of world cross country skiing. And uh, it's just quite incredible that we've got a British athlete, Scottish athlete, so far in the world, at the sharp end of the world. And, and I hope and I believe we'll be able to challenge today. It looks like, David, at the front, we've got not just the three big-name Norwegians, but we've got five Norwegian suits at the front. They really are going out, attacking this from the front. Air temperature today, uh, minus 1.3. Snow conditions, uh, preparation for this in terms of uh, ski selection, ski base and wax? Well, ski base, it, it's really the more important aspect today is the ski base. As usual, cannon, snow cannon, snow, it's very aggressive crystals, so you need quite a smooth base, not a large structure. It's a, it's a dry snow, so you've got to have a very, very limited structure on the base. So, uh, a Norwegian 1 2 3. Norway have got a great record here. Then Jakobsen up there as well. Hager. Look at the number of Norwegians who are in there. And uh, Nicol Fessel, who also uh, missed out on the race in Davos, is there. And uh, up in the top 10, uh, Teresa Stadlova, but she's seven seconds down. You can see uh, how the front three Norwegians, they had a plan. There's, there's clearly uh, a plan that's gone on because they've actually uh, really put some energy into the first 2K. They have. I thought it was quite interesting, the first minute, uh, each of those three big-name Norwegians, Björgen, of course, uh, Usberg and Vey, they really neither neither of those three wanted to lead it and of course it fell on Marit's shoulders too it was just going too slow she decided we have to punch this pace up a little Jakobsen of Norway and Stina Nielsen of Sweden are not that far behind three four seconds behind and they are very good sprinters as we go back to Marit Björgen now 11 in the background that's Astrid uh, Jakobsen following in the white suit there that is Stina Nielsen not too far off there is also uh, uh, wearing, uh, uh, just couldn't see her at the moment. Uh, looked to be uh, number nine. That's Nicole Fessel of Germany. She's certainly uh, the best placed of her nation at this moment in time. I think it just shows how brutal this track is, David. It looks quite easy when we're sitting down, but this is a steep climb up to this point, and that's where the three big names out the front are beginning to hurt the rest of the field. Best of the Finns up there uh, within four or five seconds. Well, a few moments ago, Laura Mononen of Finland. Well, up front, uh, Marit Bjergen. And to me, Mike, uh, well, in fact, she's just dropped back. She was leading, but uh, let's just focus on Marit Bjergen on the right of the screen there. Um, the rhythm that she set and the pace that she set, she's looking really good. Of course, she had the weekend off so to speak off from racing she would have been training but off from racing uh from davos but looking very good considering you know how little racing she's had 
in earnest in, in recent months. Very much. And those who went to Davos, you know, it's a tough day for Uthberg, uh, especially. Heidi only had one day, the trial out to make the top 30, and she didn't make it. But at Uthberg going through to the finals of the sprint competition, then a 15 kilometer at 1600 meters. It was a tough weekend last weekend. So Marit, as you said, will definitely be feeling uh, positive about that she'll have most recovery uh, in her body, more so than most in the field. And looking uh, a little further back, you can see how strung out they are on this second of the five rotations here. Now, when we uh, come back in the stadium and go out on the third rotation, there is a bonus point sprint. So already the three Norwegians who are out front are in very good positions to get those extra points. Yeah. Heidi Vang, uh, she rested in behind Björg in that first lap. Uh, she thinking maybe this pace is a little slow. She's really tried to get rid of the other two. It's simply not going to happen at this stage. Well, I think that's a very good point because she would be fearful of her two teammates who are arguably uh, hardened sprinters. Very much. Uh, very, very. And, and of course, Marit in her best, in her day has been a great sprinter as well what's interesting me is Stina Nielsen trying so hard she needs to tuck in behind get some slip streaming effect in there and she may just hang on to this pace for another couple of laps now that's interesting because when Stina Nielsen races a sprint she basically races when you take into account the time trial prologue the quarters the semis and the finals um, she could race uh, perhaps up to six kilometers but as you say you get a, a recovery period between each of those stages here she has no recovery period well that's right as an out and out sprinter it's the all important what 10 minutes between each the, 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 the right up into the final here your lactic acid is bubbling away in your body and destina uh, that's what makes her less effective over the distance but today so far so good after 10 minutes yeah and she's made up ground as well um the other three haven't slackened off that much because heidi ring was pushing it so it just shows you the deter determination of uh, stina nielsen you it's know if you remember who uh, in the world championships you know she was the silver medalist in falun in the sprint classic she was indeed uh, interesting it just seems like the three norwegians the big names up the front they're just taking a lap at the front each uh, as if i wonder if they've pre-discussed this probably not but uh, uh, Usberg thinking well it's time I uh, stepped up and took the pace on so they're pace sharing really at the front just enough to keep the rest of the world behind them except Nielsen from Sweden it's interesting that Marit Björgen decided to take the weekend off from Davos uh, she said that she felt tired so she was clearly listening to her body and the messages she was receiving and we know over recent years when she's been commanding the World Cup winning the Tour de Ski that actually she now really understands her body uh, uh, probably better than most other athletes and she knows in the season where she's gonna challenge for Nordic World Championship honors then uh, you know she knows how to rest and recover and then come back again now the sprint four there for three uh, bonus uh, sets of points here well that looks like Heidi Vane going wide probably trying to uh, depose Usberg at the front so uh, they'll start picking it up this is a brutal climb the camera really doesn't do it justice as usual there's only 10 points between Ersberg and Veng in the overall World Cup ranking, so uh, that's closed the gap a little bit there. <laughs> She's nibbled away at it. <laughs> Stina Nielsen, the sprinter, didn't even attempt it. She's trying to conserve some of her energy to stay with the lead group. Stina wants the big prize. And here's Anna Haag uh, leading up there. 14 seconds, you can see the gap. And now uh, uh, Natalie von Siebenthal in that second group who was sixth in Davos in the individual race. I thought that was a particularly good race by her. The under-23 skiathlon champion from last season. Oh, ah, injury, now, injury. Now, it's Fessel. It's Fessel. Now, when you fall off this track, David, it's, uh, it hurts. There's big, slumpy snow. I would like to see what happened. It's not she is in some distress. I hope it's, uh, I hope it's momentary, so to speak. And uh, there you can see the bonus points going through. Marit Bjergen. You can see, sorry, you can see how fast, well, just in the far distance. These, these bends are very difficult. It's icy. 
And uh, with, with so many people alongside you, it's sometimes difficult to negotiate the right uh, line on the corner. Well, it's interesting that Fessel actually picked up four bonus points um, for going through there. And Stina Nielsen picked up eight because uh, she's in fourth place. Actually, it, it wasn't Fessel. No. Fessel's still on her skis. I think it yeah. might well have been uh, Victoria Carr or, or was it Sandra Bing Ringwald? I didn't quite see. Well, we should get notice of that in, in a moment. Uh, we'll check on that. So, uh, 10. It is Victoria Carl yeah. uh, who fell, so uh, bib number 18. Yeah, 21-year-old and back to the front now. And Ersberg leading Stina Nielsen. They've just gapped off her a little bit. She'll pull it back, David, but the, you know, every time she comes to a climb, the Norwegians pump it up a little more, and uh, Stina Nielsen just can't quite stay with the brutal pace. That was uh, Anastasia, Anastasia Sedova there. And... The chase is on, but it's really difficult for the others to get back to these three because the effect of the bonus sprint was to turn the screw on everybody in fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth places as well. Yeah, very much. Stina Nielsen, as, as expected, pulling it back. Now, I don't think that Usbro will want to lead another lap. She's at the front now. I think the pace will slow down. She'll want the other. Yes, there she goes. She's wanting someone else to take the pace on. Heidi Vang, next. Well, this is the interesting moment, isn't it? We're now going into the six to eight kilometer period. What is Heidi Vang now? She's got three recognized sprinters uh, there to deal with. And, and surely what she's got to try to do is to really uh, take the sting out of them if she can. If she can, <laughs> you, just, you just feel that uh, Van Björg and Usberg are going to glue themselves together until the last like five, six hundred meters. Yeah, so at uh, six kilometers, uh, we'll just uh, pick out one or two others for you. So uh, you know about uh, the first four. Uh, Ragnil Hager's in there in uh, fifth place. Nicole Fessel in sixth. Then Anna Haag, uh, Natalie von Siementhal. They're all 16, 17 seconds off the lead. The promising Teresa Stadlober from Austria in there. And also uh, Silja Slind for Norway in the top ten. You can just see, uh, well, we saw there at the side of the track, if you fall off, there's some big lumps of snow and uh, they really are like uh, landing on rocks. You can see one there in the far distance and I think Victoria Carr, when she fell, that's probably what's, uh, what's really injured her. So, up front there, Heidi Veng from Ersberg, from Marit Bjergen, from Stina Nielsen. And this must be tantalizing for this group here because they can see them, but they can't catch them. And, and the trouble is, is once that gap has opened up, it, it is so difficult to try and close it again. And there is Nicole Fessel. She's leading this party from uh, Haga of Norway. Ten there. That's Anna Haag in the white for Sweden. Going through there. That's uh, Laura Mononen of uh, Finland in the middle of uh, that group. Slightly detached here. Uh, this is uh, Sedova of Russia, and then uh, 59, that's uh, a pretty good race by Anna Divik of Sweden. Oh, look at it. That's Anna Haig uh, taking a tumble there, just tripping over the ski pole, I think, of the athlete no, ahead No, that would be Maria Ridquist. Was it Ridquist? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, at least I th I'm pretty sure it was uh, Maria Ridquist. Now, Ersberg uh, back. There's no doubt that Ersberg gained tremendous confidence from that 15-kilometer win last weekend, and also the you know good performance in the sprint. Great performance in the sprint, and you know maybe Heidi Vang very disappointed to just lose out on making the semi-finals of the sprint by 0.28 of a second, and and such important points she missed that day. Uh, so she will be wanting a, a, a revenge again today. Yeah, Veng, though, in the Davos sprint, you know, was out of it. Didn't really qualify for the important stages. And, uh, but, she, you know, she isn't, she isn't slow, let's put it that she way. She certainly isn't, and uh, she'll be wanting, her, as, as I say, her revenge today. And I think uh, we saw Usberg last uh, at the front trying to really push the pace up. And she still is. There she is. Usberg uh, 
trying to get rid of the other two. The other and if, three. You, if you look at the packing here and what's happening, um, I think the packing in the men's race, which we'll see later in the day, is going to be even more intense. Oh, I, I, I think, mean, we could see think, we could see 30 athletes together going into the last two kilometers of the men's race. Totally with you. Maybe even more, 40. I was thinking yeah. even up to 50 because it is easier to stick together in the men's race more so. We've just got three, four very very strong women who can break the field this bird desperately trying to break her teammates Bjorgen and Veng and Nielsen they're managing to survive at the back of those three well I think that's the point for Fessel she's really got to uh, sorry not for Fessel for uh, Stina Nielsen she's really got to stick to the task and you can see she again she's got a little bit spread out there Marit Bjergen also with a meter or two to bring back and it's Veng and Ersberg who uh, have just upped the gear they've just moved up a gear Ersberg uh, taking a little look uh, through her legs there which one of the two big names behind me is Heidi Veng surely Ersberg's going to move over again allow Veng or Marit Bjergen to lead the next lap I think what's interesting about Ersberg is that she's prepared to attack and rest it's a uh, it also creates some Something of a bit of a staccato rhythm which is can make can be very uncomfortable uh, perhaps Stina Nielsen is feeling the most uncomfortable of these four very much but I think the the longer the Usberg is out the front she's lessening uh, more and more creating a uh, fatigue in her body so uh, she's lessening her possibility of winning this one so four for three podium places or at least that's what it looks like at this particular moment on this seventh world cup visit to La Clusa. I think it is Anna Hag there uh, who's still surviving in that uh, chasing group but have a look at that it was 16 17 seconds so that front group that acceleration in there from Ersberg and Veng that's distanced them by another couple of seconds good runs there by uh, Schlin particularly moving up in that little group now that's 26 and is that Petra Novakova it is indeed I don't think she fell, she just looked, looked absolutely exhausted. And so, Ersberg with uh, Veng sitting in behind, then Marit Bjergen, and then after that, Stina Nielsen of Sweden. And Stina, well, she'll be hoping that she can stop this being a Norwegian clean sweep. She's still just surviving in there, I think, David. Stina Nielsen at the back. She's not, uh, and quite rightly so, not taking any of the lead pace on. I'm amazed that Usberg is still at the front, uh, not encouraging Veng or Bjorgen to come through and do the work at the front. It's interesting. Uh, the first uh, race here was back in 1987 when Marianne Dalmo won the five-kilometer free. Now, she represented Sweden. She certainly did. So... Uh, needs to she does tend to close up a little bit as we get into the downhill and flatter sections of the course but she needs to be right on their tail now so Ersberg still happy to work Heidi Veng behind and they're pretty well all together again so uh, now you can see here Marit Bjergen on the left of your screen there going for that very traditional charge here and Marit Bjergen trying to make a move here and she's done so and she's taken Heidi Veng with her Ersberg on the right, Stina Nielsen at the back in white and Marit Bjergen now deciding that this is her moment she will have thought this through but also then suddenly just eases off, couldn't sustain Well, Ersberg had the better line when you're on the inside line Marit tried so hard and now she has just gone ahead but Ersberg suffering now just a little Marit really putting that turn of pace on and the uh, strength of Veng and the belief of Veng there very evident Nicole Fessel there number nine leading the chasing pack but you can see that they've actually lost visual contact with the leaders and you can see Stina Nielsen off the pace so uh, Marit Bjergen on the right Ersberg in the center on the left there Heidi Veng Stina Nielsen in white behind there and uh, look at this for a climax wow less than a kilometer to go where did Ersberg get the energy from she is an out and out sprinter as well as a distance operator but so is Bjergen so is Veng well Marit Bjergen won the last two races here in uh, 
La Clusa when she was last here, so this will be a hat trick. One of those was a 15 kilometer race, and uh, Bjergen, well, now she makes the definite break there, and she's gone away, and Ersberg has been caught, and so has Heidi Wang and Stina Nielsen. No, David, sorry, it's Wang up the front. Wang up the front, Wang yeah. was just poised there, ready to explode over the top of that rise. Wang up there with uh, then Ersberg, then Bjergen, then Nielsen. What a turn of pace, and, and I think Vane, we saw her, this is the important part of the race, I think she's without a doubt snapped uh, the other two, her teammates. Well, she decided uh, quite clearly that uh, she was not going to let this uh, go for uh, a sprint finish because too she, dangerous. Exactly, she ran the clever race, she didn't take much of the lead on, and Usberg were really unfortunate, and I, I think she took too much of the lead pace on. So Veng uh, coming in to the finish here, being pursued by Marit Bjergen, Ersberg in third place, Stina Nielsen fourth, but that was the decisive break, which is going to bring 100 World Cup points to Heidi Veng, plus the bonus points. In second place, Bjergen, Ersberg will be a bit disappointed, I fear, and then uh, Stina Nielsen, she did as good as she could. I think it was great, David Nielsen, to live with the pace of Veng, Bjergen and Ersberg, 3.5 seconds fantastic day Haga leading this little group for uh, Norway in there and uh, she's wearing bib number seven 12 on the right there that's Teresa Stadlow I think for uh, Austria and that's a remarkable performance by her Haga another Norwegian across the line uh, Haga, Stadlober and Fessel, the uh, next uh, home well, those are the uh, leaders there, and that's uh, an extremely good performance because, of course, the 20-point advantage that Heidi Veng has just earned over Ersberg by finishing in first place has now put her into uh, first place in the overall World Cup standings. Good results there for Mononen, who's the best for uh, Finland. Von Siementhal, that's a decent result. Ropponen there in 16th place. And uh, Chekalaivo had that fall uh, just inside the top 20. Well, it's almost time for Mike Dixon and myself, David Goldstrom, to take our leave. We'll be back later in the morning for what will be, in fact, the afternoon for the men's race over 15 kilometers with Andrew Musgrave. So uh, time for us to uh, move across to Ramsau in Austria, where the world's best Nordic combiners are waiting to get underway in their first competition of the weekend.